So anyway, I'm going to throw this on here real quick. This isn't exactly, I guess, to my approved 100%, but the, the order of doing everything like this. But, and I was kind of partially my preference. Um, just because I want to show you kind of how to build the front end more than be worried about when the top deck goes on. This will give you an easy way to see what's happening here. And the thing will also not be flopping around all over the place. So then, you want to take your screws, some nice long, the longest screws you can find, basically, to go here. Um, because with this front end, Kind of want to make you may want to make some adjustments. Um, I'll set that on here, right? For the time being. And then I'll also throw a couple screws in there real quick if I can find them to so keep everything lined up the right way. That's one. Got another one in here. Anyway, this has been sort of an item of discussion on the infamous F-104 thread on RC Tech. You can take the ball and screw it straight on here, and that's how they tell you to do in the instructions. This is kind of just to show you what I'm talking about here. Now, I'll snap this on for a second. This is one part where you don't have a little, or that ball snapper thing would be, help, help, would be a helpful item. Now, you can see this goes up and down here. And then, you know, there's a little bit of caster built in and all that. And that's, that's great. Um, and actually, another thing I should point out, when you do do this, usually what helps is to take a pliers and just sort of give a little squeeze there. And, uh, a little squeeze there. And that's going to let this thing drop way easier because usually... They're tight when they come out, you know, which is okay because it's better to be a little tighter than too loose. But you see, a little squeeze and they'll drop real nice. So, anyway, back to my point. Right here, that by adding spacers to that, you, know, you can raise this up, up and down. Um, and it's similar to reactive caster now. I've had people, I saw one guy on the internet saying that it's very little. Well, I don't know, you know, very, it may be very little to him, but it makes a difference. And that's the whole thing. Um, let's see if I can find myself a spacer to show what I'm talking about. All I usually do is add maybe a one or a one and a half millimeter spacer under there and uh... because this car when I first started driving I noticed sometimes it would sort of wash out mid-turn and that's you know that kills a lot of the corner speed because the car's not turning um, so basically I'll show you the, the unmounted side Basically, what we can do is take that off. You put that right here. In my case, there's not a lot of thread left on there. Oops. Maybe I'll wind up putting a smaller spacer on there. But 
if you tighten everything down, that's going to help a lot. Now you can see that spacer's on there. Um, and let's put that arm on. Okay, and we'll do the same deal, we'll give us a little squeeze. see that there's a fair amount of difference between these two um, as far as the height goes I mean, this is the best way to show it that's probably a good way to show that you can see that that is fairly taller the other thing you can do as well um, and I don't have them with I don't have any more of them because they're on another car. But there's also a shorter ball stud, and I don't know what number it is or which one it is or any of that stuff. Just shorter ball stud you can put here or here, and that will also add to this forward rake effect where your arm is facing more like this. And you can you can see that um, on the car there. You can see there's a forward rake which is the same as, as any 12 scale car. It's that full rig, and it, it exists stock, but this is just exaggerating that effect, and it makes the car have a little more steering mid corner. Um, and then we probably can also put the, maybe put the uprights on there, that'll give it a better idea as well. 